Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be discussing if you can actually work part-time while you're studying here medicine in Italy. Now this is a question I get asked all the time and I do want to say that it is actually very possible and it is very very common. I myself actually work 20 hours a week, not including the website and the YouTube channel and uh, all of those other things to pay my rent. So it is very very important to consider, but before you even think about what jobs you can do, you need to keep in mind that your visa might not allow it. Now, if you're an EU student, you don't really need to think about this, but if you are non-EU, you really, really need to pay attention to if your visa will allow you to work because a lot of study visas out straight don't allow you to work legally, or if they do, it's like limited to uh, a certain number of hours a week. So before we talk about what are the most common jobs and how you can apply for them, just please keep in mind that this is the most important consideration that if you're non-EU, you might not even be allowed to legally work. So I'm going to start off by talking about what are the most like limiting factors and the most important things you need to consider. And the first one is, is the language barrier. So if you want to work in Italy, other than one or two maybe jobs, you really, really need to be able to speak Italian. Like you're really not going to be able to work in a restaurant or a bar or things like that if you don't speak Italian. Um, this is a huge limiting factor. I always get asked like, can you work here if you don't know Italian? But there's a very high chance that you won't be able to find a job if you don't speak Italian or if you don't speak a very, very, very fluent level of English. Now you're ad at an advantage if you speak English plus another language, but I think the most limiting factor is your like capability of speaking Italian fluently. The other thing is also like what previous experience you have. It's very hard to apply working somewhere if you have absolutely no previous experience in that area. Like I see a lot of students come here and uh, they want to work in a cafe, but they've never worked before at all. Like they're just straight out of high school. They've never had a part time job and their language is kind of iffy. If you have no previous experience in any field at all, it's going to be even more difficult for you to find a job here. Now, I'm not saying it's impossible. When I first moved here, I actually started by teaching English, but I'm a native English speaker and and uh, I, I actually did do a TEFL course, but I didn't even need it in the end. And so it is actually possible if you have no previous experience to find a job. But a lot of the places where I applied to did actually require some previous teaching experience. So again, it's not impossible to find a job without previous experience, but it's like a huge, huge, huge consideration. Like, uh, especially when you want to work in a bar or a cafe, it might seem like a like an entry level job. And usually it is, but there is still some training required to it. But because they usually get an overabundance of applications, they might prefer people who have like some sort of experience there. The other thing is uh, to really consider is how many hours you need to work versus the amount of pay you're going to get. And so it's very unfortunate here that the minimum wage in Italy is quite low. Like in Ireland, I think the minimum wage just recently got put up to almost 11 euro an hour, which is great. But here in Italy, I'm pretty sure the minimum wage is around five euro an hour. So if you're going to a cafe and you need to make up like, uh, you know, 700 euro a month, for example, if you want to live here comfortably in Rome, well, not even comfortably, but if you want to live here in Rome, that is a massive number of hours that you need to work to make up uh, that amount of money. Again, I'm not saying it's impossible, but I think it's really, really important considering, um, you know, that you think about how much pay you might be getting and how much you might need to support yourself here. I wouldn't think like, oh, okay, I can just go to Milan and I can live there and I can just work in a cafe and make money because you might need to work like really, really uh, a lot of hours to be able to make up for it. The other thing also to keep in mind is having to juggle everything. Um, I know this sounds like an understatement, but re very recently, especially, I realized that it's not only the amount of hours you spend working, if that makes sense, that takes away from like your day to day. But it's also the amount of time that you spend like budgeting and wondering about like if you're going to be able to afford groceries and if you're going to be able to afford doing this and can you do this. And I realized that like, sure, where like I might work 20 hours a week, but there are probably another 20 hours a week that go into wondering like my schedule. Am I going to be able to do this? Am I going to be able to go there? Am I still going to pay my bills? Like, you know, I think it's like a really huge uh, mental burden to try and juggle everything. And it's not only the number of hours that you're working. Now, if you're uh, thinking that you just want to work part time, just to get a, like a little bit of extra income and you know, your rent and your bills don't depend on it. Uh, this is probably not as big of a deal because a lot of people I know, you know, they do their regular studies and they do their exams and whatever, and they work part time just so they have like extra spending money. Now, uh, that's a really nice situation to be in. But if you're depending on working to pay your rent and bills, I'm just going to say that 
there is like this huge like also emotional burden uh, on top of just losing those hours every week working because you also have to like consider like your schedule and how you're going to timetable everything and if you're going to be able to afford this and like sure you want to go out with your friends but is that really possible and like do you know what I mean like there's like a there's more than just uh, 20 hours a week of part-time and I feel like I didn't consider this before I came here and I don't think a lot of students did either so this is another huge thing to keep in mind that like job juggling everything uh, might be a huge uh, burden and the other thing that I think is important to consider is like having a physical job versus having a chill job. I know this sounds like uh, <laughs> like pretty obvious, but I don't think it is because I have friends that were working in bars and you know they like absolutely loved it. Uh, it was really fun, but they weren't getting home until like 3, 4 a.m. because you know that's when they close and then you need to do the cleanup and stuff. And even though it seemed like a really fun job, uh, you know it was really affecting their next day because then they had to wake up late and you know they might miss classes. And if you're doing other things like delivering packages or you know food uh, this might be a very tiresome task if you know you have to cycle all the time and these can really have like an impact on you know just like your day-to-day -day, your routines maybe your classes again I don't want to make it seem like you're not going to make it if you do these it's not true I know plenty of students who have to put up with these conditions um, but I'm just saying that these are really really important things to consider and if you are depending on working part-time to be able to live here I would say it might be worth you know taking a year off and saving some money um, if you have absolutely no other financial aid so these are just really I think important factors to consider and weigh up especially when you're trying to decide on uh, if you want to go for a certain job or not. So I'm going to talk about some of the most common jobs that students do here. This is obviously not a finite list, but I will also talk about some of the pros and cons of each and what might be some of the requirements. This is going to be a very brief overview, but one of the most common jobs is actually working for the university itself. There are these things called Borsa, which is kind of like a scholarship. We have an article on this and a video as well if you want to check out the description, but there are things uh, that are kind of like scholarships or grants where in return for doing uh, a certain number of hours by the university you'll get a lump sum of money if I remember correctly it usually works out to be around seven to eight euro an hour and it can be something like you know uh, working in the library or you know helping tutor or helping professors like uh, with uh, technical like audio video stuff things like that and so these are usually dependent on your grades number of credits you have and maybe even your family income so this is not usually just anyone can do it. Theoretically, yes, anyone can do it, but there is usually a limiting factor, like either the number of credits you have, your grades, or perhaps your family income if the competition is very, very high uh, for these positions. The next one is teaching something. This can be either a language or it can be a skill or it can even be like dance or hip hop. I know people who uh, taught hip hop. I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, Omar in our Napoli interview said that someone he knows was teaching gymnastics. So this is something very, very common and you can go for either doing like private lessons or you can do like go by teaching in a school. So I'm gonna take the example of teaching English because this is one of the most common ones. 99% uh, of the schools really require you to be basically a native level so if you're not really a native level this might not be a huge option for you but generally if you teach through a school there's the advantage that you're going to have uh, guaranteed hours you don't have to find students yourself you don't have to schedule the classes usually you don't have to prepare and plan things like everything will be done for you and you're just like uh, most of the time you just show up and you actually just teach uh, which is very very handy um but again you usually need like a native level of speaking this job on average talking to lots of students uh, pays around 10 euro an hour which is very very good for Italy standards. Now on the converse you could try to go and do this privately and charge a lot more. Usually I know people who charge between 20 to 30 euro depending on their level of experience but the problem with this is that you have to be very proactive about it. You have to find the students yourself. You have to schedule everything. You need to actually prepare things. Um, so there's like advantages and disadvantages to teaching privately versus teaching with the school. Uh, I think the thing also to consider about teaching privately especially if it's English is that even if you don't get paid this is a really 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 nice way to make friends 
and uh, practice your Italian. So doing something called a tandem is very common where, you know, you meet up with a friend and you speak one hour in English and then one hour in Italian. Or maybe like you speak fluent Spanish or Arabic, I don't know, and you find an Italian person who's trying to learn one of these languages. So you do kind of a language exchange. And I think this is a really nice way to uh, make friends and also improve your Italian. I made actually really nice friends from going to tandem nights and cafes and stuff. Uh, we never ended up speaking Italian because everyone's like, oh my God, you're English, like you have no accent. And you know, <laughs> it's really unfortunate that I never got to learn Italian through this, but it's a really nice way to make friends. And that's the nice thing about teaching uh, privately, but you have to consider that you have to find all of your students. And if you needed to, you know, survive here, you're going to have to find a lot of students and schedule a lot of things. And there's like a lot of extra overhead that goes into that. Um, some commonly taught things is like English or another language, gymnastics. You can also tutor for the IMAT. Uh, I get messages all the time asking if I tutor for the IMAT. So that's another way that you can do it. And yeah, there's like plenty of things like you can go to your home country and, you know, find two or three high school students who also want to study medicine. And so you can teach them in like high school science or maybe even in English or, you know, there's, there's like a, there's a lot of opportunities to teach something to someone, whether it's privately or through a school. So the next one is working in a bar or a cafe or this such. And this usually on average pays between five to seven euro from talking to other students. Uh, you split tips at the end of the night. So this might be like a huge bonus or if people are feeling particularly uh, stingy, you might make a lot less, but uh, usually on average, it pays five to seven euro. Some of the advantages are that especially international bars and Irish bars uh, might not require any Italian at all because it's mostly tourists that will be coming here. So, you know, if you're in Milan or Rome, this is a huge thing. Uh, you might be able to get a job here without speaking like a pretty decent level of Italian. Um, and Another advantage is that it's going to be a super fun environment. I think if you're a very social person and you like working with people, like I know my friends who work in bars, like absolutely love it, not because of the clients, but the people they work with, especially once they close up, there's usually like a small bit of like after party going. So if you're like really social and you really love like, uh, you know, going out, this might be a good option for you. The disadvantages are obviously that it is very tiring. Uh, very, very, very tiring. I'm not even talking about the hours, but you have to keep in mind that like you're on your feet the entire time, you're moving around, you're dealing with drunk people, which can be very exhausting. Like people are probably spilling drinks everywhere. You have to clean up, like getting through the crowds. I think it's very, very exhausting work to do. Um, which is a huge disadvantage. And again, like the hours are very hard. So, you know, if it's like somewhere else and then you're done at 4 a.m., then you have to travel to your house. And, you know, these are like other considerations. So, uh, you know, that's also something to think about that you're going to be done late. Uh, you're going to be on your feet the whole time. If you have classes early the next day, it's going to ruin your sleeping pattern. And again, these things seem like when you're young that they're very doable, but they start weighing in on you on a way that you don't realize. And it takes a very long time for you to realize. The next one is doing some sort of touristy thing. Now I need to give you a huge, huge warning that Italy is very, 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 very strict on things like tour guides. Uh, it carries absolutely massive fines if you're caught giving tours without some sort of license, but there are companies uh, that will hire you to, for example, drive a golf cart or, uh, you know, go on the little segue, you know, the thingies like the, yes, those thingies uh, <laughs> and, you know, show people around without actually explaining um, the history behind a lot of things. So there are, I know people who do these kind of like guided driving tours, but they're not really allowed to talk about it. They can answer questions. And so this usually pays really, really well. Uh, the nice thing is if you know, uh, you don't usually need to know Italian. Um, and the other thing is like, if you know another language, this is a super, super bonus. So like, if you know, I don't know, English and Spanish or English and Turkish, uh, this is a huge advantage. Um, this more so also goes for more touristy cities. So I can't really imagine people uh, hiring a lot of people, you know, for example, in, uh, I, I can't even think of a less touristy city, but you get my point. So. Doing touristy stuff is a very common option as well, whether that's on guided tours or, uh, you know, showing people around. I know someone who like there's there will be an incoming group of students, like usually from America. And my friend is literally just hired to just take them to restaurants and like show them a good time. So it's not even a guided tour. So this is another option. Um, but the thing that you have to keep in mind is that the competition is going to be pretty high. So you're probably going to need to speak the languages really well. And you're probably going to need to live in a bigger touristy city to have this opportunity. Another one is babysitting or au pairing. Au pairing is actually a really, really advantageous thing. I've known three people who have done it and 
their experiences have really varied, but usually families will be looking for someone who is, you know, a native, some language speaker uh, to live and look after their child. So like the friend I knew that did it here in Rome, she got free accommodation, she got free meals, and she got like a small amount of money every week. I think it was like 50 or 100 euro a week, which is really, really good, especially considering she wasn't paying any like rent or food bills. But you know, she had to drop the child off at school before her lectures, and then she had to pick the child up after work and do homework with her and cook dinner for her. And so this is like actually a really, really nice thing uh, if you like children and if you get with a good family. Now on the opposite end, I've heard like really, really hard stories where the parents were actually quite racist and they were quite mean and um, so really your experience can really vary but I think au pairing might be a really good option so that you have free accommodation free meals um, you know and you still have some time off that's a really good option or babysitting uh, like there's a lot a lot a lot of uh, people who are looking for after school babysitters, especially if you speak another language I myself just from going to the gym like have talked to random people being like you're a, you're a native English speaker. Have you thought about babysitting? Like if you babysit my child two hours every day, I'll pay you this. And I'm like, no, sorry, like I don't really uh, do that. So that is also an option. Babysitting and au pairing are very, very common options. But uh, again, usually you need to like be a very good English speaker, uh, if not fluent or another language speaker. And it's really luck of the draw. Like what if you got like a really spoiled child that would just absolutely suck. But that is actually also a very, very common option. The next one is kind of delivering stuff. I am very hesitant about this one. Uh, I personally don't know a lot of people who have done this. Usually you, ha you need to get like an investment of a bike or you know one of those like electric scooters. Uh, I couldn't even find out if there's a standard pay or if you're like dependent on how many deliveries you do when it's like winter, is it gonna be too cold to do this? Uh, but you know, the one advantage that I have found to it is that literally anyone can do it. Like you can literally just sign up on any of the delivery apps like Deliveroo, Just Eat, Uber Eats, whatever. And so that is an option I've seen, but it's very physically demanding. There might be like a very high order fulfillment rate for you to actually be able to make a decent living. And again, I just haven't really heard like a lot of positive things about it, but I did just want to mention it in passing just because it is also an option, especially for foreign students. The last one I want to mention is freelancing. This definitely isn't for everyone and kind of requires you to either like build up a portfolio or experience or have some sort of previous uh, skill set. But a lot of people I know and my myself included freelance so this can be like you freelance to translate documents or you freelance to I don't know write for a company um, you can freelance to edit I did some freelance editing and now actually we have outsourced our editing and our writing uh, <laughs> which I'm very happy about uh, we're actually waiting to introduce you guys to the team but uh, these are also options if you have a specific skill set there are websites like uh, I've written them down here Upwork, Fiverr, People for Hire when I was asking one of my friends who actually finds a lot of jobs for our other friends she said that this is one of the nicest ones because there is like a small period where you have to like learn the skill and get good enough about it where you're like promoting yourself and you know build up an experience or a portfolio on these websites but they said that like the more you do it the higher you can charge and it's really comfortable because you can do it at any time you do it from your laptop at home it's very comfortable so if you have a skill where you think you're a pretty decent writer or you think that uh you know you can edit videos or you can translate things in different languages you can go to any of the websites that i mentioned and you know start building uh, a way to do that. So that's all of the most common jobs. I'm sure there are plenty of others. If you want to learn how else to survive medicine in Italy, there's a video right here for you. Or if you want to see some of the other most frequently asked questions that aren't working part-time, uh, there's another video there for you as well.